So today is a very exciting day for our van build because I'm tackling my first project by myself. So Adam flew back to Seattle yesterday after tackling a few days on our first weekend with the van. He got the fan installed, he got some of the windows in. So thank you, Adam, I couldn't have done it without you. And my dad, thank you, dad. <laughs> we'll be saying thanks to my dad a lot. Um, so yeah, today I'm tackling my first project. I'm really excited, I'm kind of nervous. Um, I'm choosing to tackle installation by myself, something that's really easy to do without a lot of skills. You don't need tools, so um, hopefully, it, hopefully it goes okay. So as you may notice, I am sitting on a bunch of wool and it's all over my pants now and the van kind of smells like a petting zoo. But um, it's gonna be awesome when I'm done with this. So basically insulation is one of probably like the most controversial, confusing topics of van life and van building. So when we were researching insulation, you see so many different options and everyone does it a little differently and um, you hear like, this one's bad and someone's like, no, it's good. So it's just really confusing out there. So we kind of looked at all the options, we read tons of resources and we ended up going with sheep wool, specifically Havelock wool, which is a company based out of the Tahoe area. Um, they built their own vans with their own wool, which is really cool. So this wool is from sheep in New Zealand, which is pretty awesome. It's like pure wool. They just spray it with a little bit of stuff so there's no insect problems. Um, we bought the two inch bats, um, which are like these little, I don't know, like little strips of wool. They also have a loose fill, but we thought the bats would be better because you can rip it off and make your own loose fill with it. Um, there's a few reasons why we chose Havelock wool at the end of the day. So one, um, it's really easy to install. We don't need like special equipment. We don't have to wear like any protection. Um, two, it is um, not toxic. So basically we don't have to worry about any toxins getting in the air from our installation. It's you know good for you to breathe in and it's totally okay. Um, three, it's warm. So obviously that's the reason why we're doing this to you know be warm when we need to and stay cool when we need to. Um, it's also you know easy to install like I said but like you can shove it into little crevices easier you don't have to, like cut stuff. Um, it's also good with moisture and so basically condensation is inevitable in the van that's what we've learned. Um, instead of trying to like remove it or try to avoid it um, you should just try to manage it. So basically from our understanding um, wool works really well with moisture because when the humidity is up to 65%, or when it goes over, I'm sorry, over 65% relative humidity, um, it absorbs the moisture. And then when it goes back down underneath that, the moisture dissolves. So we won't need to worry about like pools of water in the van that could cause problems down the line. Um, so it's really good with moisture management. And then lastly, it's also good with sound. So it's supposed to be a good sound dampener. Um, you may notice we don't have any rattle trap in here, which it seems like most people do it and we've tried to research it um, and at the end of the day we just decided not to go with it. We talked to the guys at Havelock Wool. They told us that basically you know if we want to spend the extra money on it we could but they have this in their van and it it's like driving in a cloud as I think how they described it. So we're not going to do it. Um, I know this might be controversial and maybe we'll regret it. I don't know. I hope not. Um, but we're going to go for it. So. I basically I took all these bats out of the bag so they kind of like shrink wrap it to ship it to you and so I kind of let them air out a little bit um, now I'm just gonna start tearing it apart I think the first thing I'm gonna do is just start shoving it in all the holes because I think once all the holes are filled then I can start putting it in some of the bigger areas so I think that's what I'm gonna tackle first and hopefully I do an okay job I'm gonna make my mom and my dad like go through and like check all the all the little holes and stuff later but wish me luck Possible pro tip. I brought out a marker so I can shove the wool into spots that my fingers can't reach without like getting all cut up. Um, I've seen some other people do and it sounded like a good idea, so we'll try it out. When you look at the van, it's very clear that there's like tons of holes and little spots, but you don't really realize until you start shoving wool into everything. And you're like, wow, there are way more spots than I thought there could be. <laughs> So I'm about done stuffing the driver's side nooks and crannies. I've cut up my hands a little bit trying to shove stuff in there, so I think I did a good job. I'll probably have someone double check it. Um, now I'm going to start on the passenger side, which is actually even better because there's less like nooks and crannies on this side because we have like the whole door. 
Um, and we're going to install a window there on Friday, hopefully. Um, so yeah, I'm going to just keep trucking along. Um, and then after I fill all the nooks and crannies, I'm going to start putting in like the bigger, like more of like the actual bats in the, um, other spaces. So the goal tonight is to finish the walls. Um, a little ambitious, but I've, I've gotten a lot done so far. And then tomorrow I'm going to tackle the ceiling and the headliner. Um, we're going to do the floor. We do need to order more wool for that. And we're also going to do a subfloor. So um, that'll likely be a different video because we'll probably explain our whole subfloor process and everything. Um, but yeah, it's going pretty well. This is fun. It's so soft. Um, so I kind of keep like shoving it around my hand before I shove it in somewhere that way. I don't get my hands cut up too bad, but it's really soft. Um, the sheep petting zoo smells, I'm adjusting to it. So I have a sheep all over me. So I'm basically a sheep now. So day one of installation is done. I almost got as much done as I wanted to. Um, I'm kind of struggling to figure out how to get the insulation on like the window imprints. Um, there's just not as much space to like shove the corners into or the sides um, to hold it up. So I'm debating between string, but I tried that and I really struggled it all fell down. So <laughs> debating between trying that again tomorrow or just taping it. Um, I'm not really sure. I'm hoping my dad will help me tomorrow because it's definitely not a two hand job. I need like, an, I need two more hands to kind of have someone hold it up, the other person like strap it down somehow. So here's a little glimpse at what I did today. Got all these little guys filled in. Except the window ones. But it's looking pretty good. Um, happy with how it's going so far. Proud of myself for doing it. So we'll get going again tomorrow and hopefully we can get the ceiling and the rest of the walls done. I still have a good amount left, so I think we should be good, um, but we'll see. All right, it's installation day two. Um, my dad and I spent a lot of time today kind of strategizing our plan for the day. So our main goal is to get the ceiling done, and then if we have time, hopefully the headliner done as well. So for the ceiling, our plan is to basically put up all the bats and then use strain to kind of create like a big net that suctions them up to the to the ceiling so they don't like droop or fall down or anything. Um, we're also gonna hopefully get all these like little, um, kind of like little tunnels on the ceiling filled with insulation as well. I watched a video where someone uses like a vacuum cleaner to do that. So that's my first task is to see if that will work. I hope it does. Um, and if not, I'll have, a, have to figure out a plan B. Um, for the headliner, it's basically just removing it. It's the hard part and then just shoving it with insulation. Um, a couple other decisions that we made today was to not fill these like window imprints as I'm calling them with insulation right now. Um, so I'm only here a couple more days and I go back to Seattle and then when I come back we'll probably start making like some framing for the walls and stuff and then we'll work on that then. So we're not going to do that in this video but do know that we will insulate those. Um, we just don't think there's a huge rush right now because we're not putting the walls up quite yet. Um, we're probably going to end up taping them up and we just just we just think we can wait a little bit. So that's kind of the story behind that. Um, and then for the wheel wells, we kind of discussed potentially rattle trapping those. I know I said yesterday we weren't going to rattle trap, but we want to make sure that there's no like loud sounds coming from the wheel well area. But what we think we're going to do instead is just build the benches as you can kind of see with our layout around the wheel well and then create like another box around them and shove it with insulation. Um, half lock wool has like a 90% sound absorption. So we feel pretty confident that that'll help reduce the sound a lot. It'll also insulate that area. So we'll be doing that farther down the line as well, but I just thought I'd give an update. Um, so we only have like five hours to get this done. So I better, I better get started, I guess. <laughs> okay. So I lied. We are not insulating the headliner today. We're actually going to do a shelf underneath it. That way we can store stuff above our heads while we're driving, especially like our backpacking gear and stuff. And so we're going to wait until we actually install that shelf to mess with that whole area, just because we figure let's just spend our time in the headliner area once, not multiple times. So that's okay. I feel like my task list is getting smaller every day because every day I'm like, crap, I can't actually do as much as I wanted to, but that's okay. Good news. I figured out how to insulate these support beams. Um, so I tried the vacuum trick and at first it didn't work, but then we tried it again and it worked really well. So basically what you do is you tie, you get some string and um, we got some like mold and mildew resistant string because we plan on stringing the ceiling with this too. We want to make sure we don't get any mold in the van. So we tied a little piece of a t-shirt. I like ripped off a piece of this t-shirt, tied it on because you want something for the vacuum to kind of suck up. Um, you, need to make, you need to make sure it's really light and then the strings light as well. 
So then you put this through like one, well actually, sorry, rewind. You tape up all the holes on the support beam. That way it's not like all this air coming out. So after you do that, you put this string in the hole at the beginning. You put a vacuum right here. And then my dad helped, but he kind of like helped push it through and it started sucking it through. So then once the string comes out on this side, you grab it down and then you tie wool to this side. And so I've been cutting out these like little thin strips of wool and then you just pull it through and you have to be really slow and careful because the first time I made the thickness of the wool too wide and I think I pulled it too hard and it broke inside of here so we had to try again. Um, so I will film while I'm doing this so you can see it better but basically it's pretty easy. It's just kind of a easy way to kind of slide something through there. It's kind of a hard space because the holes are really small unlike some of the holes on the wall. Um, but we found this on YouTube, so I'll link below to whoever, um, whose channel it was that we found it because they deserve the credit for this idea, not us, um, but it worked great, so thank you. <laughs> So we've started to get some of the ceiling in and we've tried a few different methods. We've tried just like doing crisscross like a bunch with it really tight and like shoving it in and that took kind of a while. So now I'm just doing like like kind of back and forth, back and forth and I loosen it and then I like kind of lay it in there and then I tighten it. That seems to be working better. The hard part is just like getting the string in like the small holes and then finding the spots to tie it. Um, I'm also like have like wool in my mouth and like looking up is kind of painful and like the wool keeps like falling in my eyes so um i've probably eaten a good amount of wool today um so that's kind of where i'm at right now and i made a promise to myself i'm not going to bed until i finish this so it might be a long night We have ceiling insulation! Well, maybe like 90% of it, but hey, that's better than yesterday. So last time my mom and dad helped me get most of the ceiling insulation up. It was really nice to have an extra set of hands, so thank you mom and dad. Y'all are the best. Um, what we ended up doing is what I kind of explained earlier. We just took the string and kind of like zigzagged it between the beams to make kind of like a V pattern. This is what it looks like. Um, to do that, we use the side of the support beam where there's an opening and a little hole. This is what that looks like. Um, it made it really easy to loop the string through between each one. So it worked really well. Once we had all of the string set up, we loosened it, added the wool, tightened it, and then we tied the string to like one of the thicker parts of the support beam on the end. We tried to make it as tight as possible in an area where it like really just was like supported. Um, so that uh, worked out really well. Um, the only concern we have is that some of it might be sagging a little bit um, just from like overstuffing it or maybe not stuffing it well. So hopefully when we start to install the ceiling panels, um, we don't run into any issues. But the nice thing about Havelock wool is it's very like adjustable and you can rip stuff off and like shove it and push it. So um, it should be okay, but that's just one thing to keep in mind. Another thing to keep in mind is that the, the space between the beams can vary between them as well as they can be bigger than the actual wool is. So for some of them we had to do like two bats of wool or like one bat and like a little on the ends to make it fit okay. So keep that in mind as well. Um, we did not do the space above or around the fan because we are doing a mounting around the fan and we just wanted to see what that looks like first to save ourselves from, from potentially doing double work. Um, we also did not do the side walls yet for the reasons I mentioned earlier. We're gonna wait until we actually start to install the walls to kind of support it and hold it in. Um, same with the floors. We're gonna wait until we kind of build out the space more to do the floors. My dad has a really cool idea of how to build the van to make it a little easier. So we're gonna try that out. Um, did not do the back windows or this window because we still have to install those windows. So we wanna just wait until that's done. So we still have some insulation to go, but I feel like the hardest part with like all the nooks and crannies is done. So I'm feeling really good. So I'm gonna cut the insulation video here. 
Hopefully I showed you enough of how to install Havelock wool, why we like Havelock wool, and then just some general insulation tips to make your van build easier. Um, so if you have any questions, just let me know, but I will see you next time.